Hello you guys, um, this is going to be a, well, hopefully a review for Doro Hedoro Volume 12. I think about what volume I was on, cause I lost it there for a second. Well, not the volume itself physically, I mean like, it was there in my mind, then it just kind of disappeared. So yeah. And, um, events... That I'm going to recall from the volume may not exactly be from that volume in particular, but just but just know full well that it's not anything past the volume 12. <laughs> okay, so here is the gist of the volume. Okay. First we start off with N being dead. Why his death is so damn important, and the ramifications that it has on the magic world, the fact that Kaimon is no longer alive, and is po has possibly split into three separate people, or beings, that being Curse, Kai, who we, who we um, get introduced to about the end of the volume, and Aikawa who was once friends with Risu uh, in the past. Now, what's so significant about all three of these is the fact they all share traits with the Lizard Man we all come to know and love as Kaimon. Now, Curse is a bit more trickier than the others. Or at least I think so. When it comes to the traits. Now, I think Curse is more or less just a manifestation of all the resentment that Kaiman had probably felt deep inside. The resentment towards uh, whoever it was that killed him. Whoever, the, whoever it was that initially decapitated him. Because when his body was originally found, he was found as a decapitated corpse. And I believe he was, he was found by uh, the doctor that kind of looks like fucking Pinhead without the pins, you know, embedded into his skull. Kai, maybe this dude's the leader of the Cross Eyes. Maybe he isn't. The fact that he was there where the supposed leader lives. I'm just going to say, you know, dollars or donuts, he's the fucking leader. Which would mean that Kaimon is the leader of the Cross-Eyed Gang. Without even realizing it. And they're saying how the, how the crosses on his eyes were like a birthmark. Where everyone else that has joined the gang basically gets them tattooed on their eyes. And Kaimon's crosses on his eyes were like a kind of a weird birthmark as well. So, maybe Kai is the true form of Kaimon. Now, also makes you wonder, who the fuck is Aikawa, then? Because Aikawa was the, was the person that Asu meets. And this is after, you know, Kaimon me meets his defeat, again, meets his defeat at the hands of N. Okay, and probably one of the... Uh, best endings to a volume I have ever fucking read. I think that was in volume 10 or 11. Um, and Aikawa has no recollection of ever being this being called Kaimon. But yet, he is the only one who essentially was saved by Asu. It's, it's so fucking weird. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not awesome anymore. Um, that's right, he lost his devil powers. He's now Kawajiri, who he used to be. Okay, so here are the... Now, like I said, the first major point is N's death and how that has affected the magic world. The fact that the N, the N family has pretty much fucking shattered. Except for those are that are very loyal to him uh, being... The main cast that we come to know and love from this side of the, of the series. 
that being Noi, Shin, Fujita, Ibisu, um, for anybody, uh, Choto, or Chota, I think his name is, the f fucking bird guy. How there's Choto or Chota, that's gonna drive me nuts now, god damn it. Anyways, <laughs> that's neither here or there. Um, I don't get just stuck on stupid little details like that. <laughs> oh, man. Now, Shin and Oi want to know who did this. Because seeing a decapitated head being brought down by arm from the vents in the ceiling put Fujita, I'm sorry, put Fujita into a coma-like state. Now, there's a character that did show back up in this volume named Turkey. Turkey's magic ability is basically he cooks a dish, the dish turns into a doll, and the doll essentially heads to where, like... But now, this is the part I'm having a hard time remembering if, if the doll heads to where the dead person's at or who killed the dead person. Either or. So, they follow this doll to this apartment complex... But at the same time, backtrack a little bit, there's this group of uh, crocodile refugees. They've been just holding out in the boonies for a long fucking time. And they're just trying to make ends meet. The minute they get a whiff that their leader has returned, they went sayonara capybara and just bolted for the same damn place of residency that their leader might be living at. Or that they believe he's living at. And such, a conflict ensues between the two parties with Shinonoi and these five cross-eyed guys. Whose names I can't remember at the moment because I didn't bother writing it down. Um, I think one of them is like Matsumo or Matsuyumo or something like that. Um, there's a guy that that can uh, create poison from, uh, I want to say, saliva. And they're all fairly skilled at knife fighting. Now, the first time that Noi and Shin had come into contact with any Cross-Eye member, they got messed up. Bad. Because Cross-Eyes know something that a lot of Magic users don't take into consideration. The fact that there are areas in the body of a magic user that if you basically hit those areas, it will make it to where they can't use their black smoke. Now, the black smoke is essentially the power of a magic user. If they can't produce black smoke, their magic will not work. So, Shin and Noi learn about this from Dr. Kusakabe, who at this point is with his uh, wife, Haru, who is a demon, and I don't quite remember why or what they're doing together. I am not quite remembering that part. <laughs> but, all these dudes fight, and then Shinoi kind of just disappear. At the end of the volume, we meet Kai. Like I said, supposedly he, I'm supposing... That he's the leader of the Cross Eyes. I'm not too sure about this. And he's confronted by Curse. So, I'm wondering if Curse is confronting him on Risu's behalf. Or, if Curse knows more about Kai than Kai actually knows about himself. I know that sounds really, really weird, but hey, that could be the case. Okay? Could very well possibly be the case. Also, I believe all of the uh, cro those cross eyed refugee guys were s they were saved, I think. Mm, don't quite remember if they were or weren't. Man, I probably should have reread this volume before doing this. Oh well, I didn't. <laughs> uh, this may seem very unprofessional. I don't care. Another thing to take from this, too, is the fact that Kawajiri and um, Nisekoi... Was it Nisekoi? No, that's not her name. 
Uh, Nikaido, there you go. Nisekoi is a series, Justin. It's not a name of a character in this in this manga. The hell. Uh, Nikaido, that those two are going to work on her magic in a way where they can actually utilize her ability and not have to where it will hinder her. Because the more, you know, they can work on it and utilize and learn how exactly it works, it could possibly work to their benefit in the long run. Now, what the long run outcome of the story is, no idea. Because the whole point of the story was basically, who's Kaiman? Who is he? And now, that, and now that it's basically laid out there plain to see that there's three mother there's three mother cluckers that all resemble him in some shape or form exist now. Was Kaiman one person, or was he many? What was he? Was Kaiman a just a weird experiment? Was, or was Kaimon the, um, hmm, or was Kaimon, or was Kaimon what happened to that dude named I that fell into that, like, dirty, gucky water stuff, and then when asked to become a magic user... By the hands of uh, uh, by the by the hands of Kusakabe, was his death the uh, the actual uh, creation of these three? Because maybe it's like. The Christian God philosophy, you know, three as one, where possibly curse is the Holy Spirit, Kai is the father, and Aikawa is the son, and all three of them together create Kaimon, maybe. Or maybe I'm just, you know, making stuff up at this point. <laughs> Probably the, the biggest thing, though, is just how much of an impact N had in his organization, well, had on the magic world itself. That was just, wow. And the fact that, you know, like, almost all of his workers kind of deserted, you know, the state. It became a very desolate place. And I was pretty shocked when and died, to be honest. Yeah. Huh. But at least he got to, you know, um, experience a uh, hairstylist competition at the end of the volume. Granted, it was just his decapitated version of himself, but yeah, that was pretty damn funny, actually. <laughs> Okay, so um, I probably missed a lot or forgot a lot that happened in the volume itself. And rest assured, next volumes, I'll be writing names down of new characters. I'll be writing down their importance and such. And I will probably make a better video too. <laughs> Oh, God. You know, it's just that I haven't been in front of a camera in so damn long that I just kind of forgot how to really go about doing this. Not going to lie. Kind of feel nervous. Actually, I've been feeling nervous for the past, uh, what's this, 14 minutes, 28 seconds? Yeah. That entire time, I've been feeling very, very nervous. But rest assured, this is not just going to be me doing one video and then I'm going to say... Adios, amigos. Uh, actually, no, that's in a rhyme. Adios. Whatever. But yeah, anyways. I do plan on making more videos. I plan on uh, essentially just doing volume reviews. 
which I'll explain more of that, I guess, in another video. So, with that being said, um, leave a comment down below. If you've read the volume, tell me what you thought of it. Uh, please, if you can, keep spoilers for future events to a non-existent. <laughs> I don't want to read the comments because I'm going to read them and get spoiled on something. That's going to suck for my experience with the series. Oh, uh, yeah. So leave a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell because I am going to be making more content. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to be making a lot more content. And it's not just going to be geared only towards uh, anime and manga stuff. Okay? So that being said, bye.